Welcome to God's Food for Thought. We're continuing with applying the parables of Jesus. And today we're going to talk about the rich man and Lazarus. And it can be called a parable, but it might not be a parable. It might be an actual occurrence because this is the only time where a person is named in his parables. Usually a parable does not have a name. But this talks about a rich man and a person named Lazarus. Anyway, the, the teaching of this is very important because it really deals with eternity and it deals with where you will go, where we will go when this life is over. Starting in Luke chapter 16 and verse 19, out of the New Living Translation, it reads this way. Jesus said, There was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen, who lived each day in luxury. At his gate, right there in front of where the rich man was, lay a poor man named Lazarus. Of course, this is not the Lazarus that Jesus raised from the dead. It's another Lazarus. But he gives him a name there. And he, he was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. So we see the rich man and the poor man. Now the object of this lesson is not to say that being wealthy is bad. It's okay to have wealth, but it's bad when the wealth has you. Wealth with selfishness is not a good thing. It's not saying it's virtuous to be poor because anybody that's been poor knows that it's not the best thing in the world. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with where is your heart? Well, in verse 22, Jesus says, finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. Now, the New Living Translation phrases it that way because really Abraham's bosom was it was in the in the earth, but it was a place of paradise. It was a place of God as opposed to the other place. The rich man also died and was buried, and he went to the place of the dead. There in torment, he saw Abraham in a far distance with Lazarus at his side. So this lets you know that when you die, first of all, you are aware of where you are. <laughs> you know, so... Don't think, well, when, I, when I'm dead, it's all over. No, it's just the beginning. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames. Remember, this is being told by Jesus himself, by God. Hell is a real place. Heaven is a real place. And it's forever. So the rich man is pleading. Father Abraham. Interesting, he doesn't call out to God. He calls out to Father Abraham. Because his fate had already been sealed. But Abraham said to him, verse 25, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted and Lazarus had nothing. And parentheses, you might say, and he was right there at your gate. So now here, he is here being comforted and you are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here. Hear the finality of that statement. 
and no one can cross over to us from there. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home, for I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. In other words, the word of God is quite enough. The rich man replied, no, Father Abraham, if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. As if the word of God is not the most powerful persuader. But Abraham said, they won't listen to Moses and the prophets. Now remember, Jesus is telling us, they won't be persuaded even if somebody rises from the dead. And it ends. So the rich man, not because he was rich, because of his hardened heart. The poor man, not because he was poor, but he obviously had a heart after God. And again, this, this parable talks about eternity. And you might wonder, well, what do we do about people that aren't saved? Well, we know already what to do. We are to pray for them. We are to intercede. We've talked about the parables, two of them, that's, that said, don't give up. Keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Don't give up. Look up instead. You know, when you can't help yourself, you appreciate somebody reaching down and pulling you up. And when somebody's absolutely controlled by sin, they appreciate a hand of prayer that's going to help them come up out of that sin. That's what intercession is all about. God is the one who invented intercession because he did give us choice and because some of us make the right choice and others don't. He gave us that ability to make the difference. Lord, I pray yes for that person who's saying no to you. I pray yes, I pray yes, I pray yes. Help them, Lord. And God made a way of interceding. Jesus prayed for us in John chapter 17. Prayed for his disciples and for us. We can certainly pray for each other. The main thing is keep walking with the Lord. Keep your relationship close to the Lord. Every day, ask him to draw you closer to him. And we're going to sing a song that's all about that. It's a song of intercession for ourselves. Lord, draw me close to you. Never let me go. I'm going to lay it all down, Lord, for you. Well, we'll see you tomorrow with another parable. God bless you.